Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zen. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we are happy to announce Zim 8.3.0 with animating along a path. So here we have the bug animating along a squiggle, and this is dynamic, so you can change the squiggle. <laughs> and the bug will also uh, change. Can you believe it? Oh, it'll go right through that cup. <laughs> we'll take a little shortcut. <laughs> there we go. The shortcut. And this is an animation, so you can pause it and start it and do other things like bounce and all that kind of stuff um, at your leisure. So let's take a look and see how this kind of stuff is done. We'll go into some code now, and that's the squiggle. Why don't we take a look at just a few additions as well. We can now add and remove blob points uh, by default. So here we are going to add, remove blob points. Let's take a look at this one and see what we're talking about. And open in browser. So here's a blob, and if we want, we can just add a point right like that to the blob. By clicking on the blob. Now you can um, actually do that by clicking sort of anywhere on the blob, even inside of here, uh, like so, and control click to remove them. So this is a control click and they're removed. Not only that, but if we add the uh, add, add a point like so, let's bring it on over here, and then we refresh the page the blob is now stored in the exact same state. So let's try that again. We add that and I refresh and there we are. If I remove some of these -doop -ba -doop, and refresh the page, there we are. So that in the past would break or would not work properly if the number of points were different. And that was a little bit complicated to uh, manipulate that uh, to work this way. But now that we're automatically adding and removing points, it's, it was sort of a necessary thing to fix. So that's pretty cool. And that comes out of the package now. If you want to turn it off, you say uh, you have a parameter called edit points and that can be set to false and then you won't be able to add and remove points. You'd still be able to change the points because um, to stop that from happening you would lock controls. So that's a, the blob adding example and here is a, the an animate to a blob so let's take a look at this in a browser. This is a blob and what you can do is animate to it so hit go Oop. And there we are animating to the blob. Hide the blob and we're still animating. So as mentioned, uh, well maybe you don't know, this was dynamic. I think we did it with the, the bugs. So now we can do all sorts of things, including adding to the, the blob new um, places like that. And you can see that the animation is still going. Let's remove that one. Ugh. Isn't that excellent? It is most excellent. Hmm. Whoa, that's a little bit of a curly, curly cue on that, huh? Here we go. So that's animating to a blob, and we can again stop animating if we so desire. That's just with the pause animate. So let's dig into the code a little bit on this one and see how that works. We are in, first of all, Zim 8.3.0. We're making a blob. That's just normal, centering it on the stage. On top false so that when we click on the bob it, blob it doesn't come up on top of our little arrow that we're animating along there. We made an arrow which is a triangle. And a triangle points up by default when you set it up like this. And we want it to point at zero degrees, which is to the right. So we rotate it 90 degrees. Now, if we want to put it onto a point, then we can, um, we can find a point like so. Uh, blobs now have, well, that's where the, we have a location. And so we can use the loc to place it on top of another object and that that object uh, or it will handle local to local or local to global issue kind of things as well so that's pretty neat that happens to be the circle inside of blob one 
We're also adding the rotation. Sorry, my cat is knocking at the door. Just have a look at that. I will get the cat. Just came in, just came out. All right, we're back again. Did you have a look there? Uh, blob has a get point angle now where you can it will take the angle of the the, the sticks there the tangent so that will start the blob in the in the proper rotate or sorry start the arrow in the proper rotation and we've added that to the 90 degrees now it's a bit of a pain because as soon as we animate uh, what we've got now is a, a go button that's going to toggle between these things when we click if we haven't animated yet then i'm going to rotate the arrow back to <laughs> see what i mean rotate the arrow back to zero degrees because what happens is when you animate on a path so here we are animating on the path this part at least is easy uh, the other part you probably don't even have to worry about in many cases um, but this part is saying, hey, animate a, along the path of the blob. And so now if it's going to orient to the um, path, it would expect to be at zero. Um, and that's just because a triangle is how it is. You can orient, orient, colon, false here. And then it will not rotate to follow the blob. So we'll try this. So at the moment, we've positioned it on the first point. We've said point to the right and then uh, align with these sticks, which happens to be fine now. But if we saved a different shape, then it, it might be starting with a different alignment. And we hit go. And now you can see that that triangle is not orienting. Ori <laughs> <laughs> orienting to the path. You can also orient it to anything. For instance, here's we're going to orient to the go button. So the go button is what we're clicking on. And I save that and refresh here. Now as this blob goes around, it will always point to the or sorry, as the target goes around, it will always point to the button. So there it is pointing to the button. This can be dynamic. We'll show you that in another example. Also, this works without animating to a path. So you can animate an X and Y to go from one corner to another and all the while point to the center of the page or something. So you can orient to a point such as um, squiggly bracket X colon stage width divided by two comma Y colon stage height divided by two. If you orient to that point then it will point to that as as it is animating. So that's kind of cool, but by default it's going to just automatically orient to the path unless you turn that off and once again that looks like this where it follows the path which is probably the most common. Excellent. You can do things like rewind true and that would uh, look like this. Off it goes. It will go around once and then it will turn around and go back the other way and so forth. So anything that you can do with animate, you can do on here. You could make it bounce, for instance, um, bounce out. And we'll check this out. Go, boing, 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 boing. But then it, uh, when it flips, it does the bounce in the opposite direction. Boing, <laughs> boing, boing. Cool, huh? All right, so that's that one. Uh, let's take a look at blob2. So this is blob2.html. And in this one, we're making a blob again. We made a tile of triangles this time. So six by four tile of triangles. The button to make it go. Uh, we've got a target which is a circle and we're going to move that with a new motion controller so we're moving this little circle around when we click it we're going to animate the arrows so here's animating the arrows to the path but this time we're orienting to the target instead of the blob uh, which would happen by default if we just left it like this or no orientation we just saw these if we set it to false. But this time we're 
uh, going to set the orientation to this circle that is being controlled by a mouse move motion controller. So we save this and open in browser. So here's that little circle that's following uh, the motion. We've put the uh, put the little triangles off stage and how we're animating the triangles if you take a look as well we're doing a sequence here so there's a tile filled with triangles which is right here there's a tile filled with these triangles all of them are rotated to be pointing at zero degrees we position that off stage then when we animate we're going to uh, bring them in in a sequence so that looks like this. Go. So now they're in, in a sequence and take a look at where they're pointing. Now they're pointing all into the middle. I like it sort of going next to it and watching them all kind of go around and go So I turn this off. Isn't that cool? And once again, this is this is dynamic, so let's just pause this for a second. We, we don't have to pause it. Uh, where I can move these shapes. Uh, about, uh, about that, sure. It's fine. Let's go this little circle following and hit go. And now they're flying around our new shape and all still pointing to this little blob. And it's so much fun. It's again being dynamic. <laughs> it's just hard to <laughs> click this thing when all these things are going by. Uh, we can add shape. Oh, missed. Uh, we can add. There, I got one. We can add things to it as well. Okay, let's see what's going on there. That's another point added, etc. Neat, huh? <laughs> take, a little, take a little bit of time doing that. To do, to do. Let's add another one or two. So we'll add one over here as well. Oh, come on. There we go. Now there is a possibility when we add things to the blobs or, or squiggles. Uh, you saw an earlier squiggle one working. When you add things to the blobs and the squiggles, uh, it, it currently it's it sets a mirror thing there, very very small mirror thing. Most editors, when you click here, will give you little little sort of sticks like that and try and make it so that those sticks stay on the line. There may be an equation for that. I'm not sure. I don't I don't have it. <laughs> I don't know it, but. I think that under the circumstances, starting off with this, you, you know that you can also click these. So if uh, if we want, there it's back to the original. Here is one where we can make divots or whatever, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Hang on, I can make a better <laughs> that little circle following. But there we are making a divot, and that's fine. It'll follow that. Shall we? Shall we check it out? And there they all go. Uh, going around the divot, they're moving f slower now because we've um, increased the the number of um, number of points and stuff like that. And then the next one is a straight line point. So let's get rid of some of these points. And let's just turn them all to uh, a boxes, like a box. Uh, we do hope to in the future animate to a box, but for now, if you wanted to animate to a box, you could just do it like this. Ooh, they're all pointing at this thing along a box now. Okay. So you can animate um, uh, along shapes like that pretty easily. And these things can be recorded as in this example, the squiggle example, open in browser here. This squiggle is rec was recorded and in this example at explore slash squiggle animate, it uh, shows you the process for uh, recording that. 
and here it is not that this right here so originally the path was just a normal squiggle so if we comment this out so it was just a squiggle and let's view this open in browser so it's going to take a long time because we've set it to be quite slow I was expecting something longer so there's the original squiggle and then what we do is we've added a key down event or whatever or a button or something like that and if it's the letter R then we're going to record points or you can make a button and just say button dot on click path which is the squiggle dot record points true will pop up a nice little window for you so let's uh, let's record a new one so now what we can do is kind of oh, okay well imagine it, we wanted it to be really up and down and up and down like that like so a big W or we could add add things <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this one <laughs> put it over here put this one back down and in, into there okay so now we have our new path it's a it's a fancy W you can see it and we hit the R key so R where'd my R go R and this is the path uh, recorded so we copy that we come into here and we would say points please make it that put a little comma on the end because um, that's it so there's our new recorded squiggle we come to here and close this down and refresh and the uh, the bug now is is moving along that newly recorded squiggle now if you want the end user to record things uh, they don't really need to record them because you can set it up so that uh, it will automatically save and that's with the transform manager so for instance the transform manager was applied here on the blob add example right there new transform manager so that's what it takes to actually let the user record here's the blob you've been playing with the blob by adding a new transform manager passing in the blob and an ID it will, will save that so when we open this up in a browser that's the same blob as before if we didn't add the transform manager then it would be back to a default blob but if we do add the transform manager then it's the saved blob that we had from before so in other words a user can change these paths and affect the animation and when they come back it'll be the same path that they've left it with the same animation or you can choose to um, create the path ahead of time for the user see this is my path I can't show this to the users because the user it would be expecting the user to make their own path so if I wanted to show this path to the user I would have to record this path and then put it into the parameters here just like we did here I'd have to record that path that I made and put it in as a parameter then the user will start off with this and it's up to you whether you want to record the path that they've made after that uh, you could have a reset it's easy to reset this thing it's re easy to reset the path you just say uh, the transform manager dot clear so you could have a button that says transform manager dot clear and that would clear the path so that's pretty cool huh? I'm teaching kids that I'm teaching eight-year-olds how to do that <laughs> it's not hard <laughs> so uh, I think we've got a lot of things going on here in, with the uh, with the animating to this path and blob manipulation and recording and so forth and that has been what's bubbling at Zim well let's just pop out uh, to the docs here uh, under the updates for 8.3.0 we've added loc which is a, a chainable method it, it's exactly like pose used to be where you just can pass it loc and x and y with the added bonus that if you pass it um, an object uh, such as a display object any object that has an x and y property such as a display object it will locate your uh, whatever you know, here so it's like my pick dot loc and then in here if you pass an object it will um, it will put it at the same place 
even if they're in different containers so it handles local to local so that's really cool uh, this now because it was a bit of a pain actually you know when we had pose and pose used to work x and y to the registration point if we wanted to pose to the mouse position or something it would put the always put the top left to the mouse position rather than the registration point which might be the center well now I'll use loc so loc to the mouse x and mouse y will just locate the registration point there so pose is very handy been using that a lot pose is very handy now to position things relative to the top left or the bottom right or the bottom etc and that i've been using that all the time now it makes it much easier to place interface on the left hand side or on the right you know on the bottom stuff like that it's very excellent uh, but it was a pain in the neck to bring back what I was starting to do was say well okay now I'm not going to use pose to position it at the mouse x and mouse y I'm going to use the x property and the y property again um, so I dropped out to the x and y property but bringing back a chainable method called loc to be able to quickly get to the x and y with your registration is is pretty amazing too so we're really happy about this addition of the loc chainable method then we've got information on the paths, including the, the links here um, and the improvements to the, uh, the blob and the squiggle as well in there for 8.3. And in the documentation itself, if you type in loc, you'll get to the, the loc information. If you type in blob, you'll start to see there's the edit points parameter, by the way. Um, so turn that to false if you don't want it to add points and remove points. And there's also a little example, a quick example of animating. So make a new blob, there's a circle, animate it to that path. And that <laughs> follows the path. It's like, yes, <laughs> that's excellent. So uh, that's up there as well. And that, my friends, is what's been bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. We're getting more and more people in at the Zim Slate. Slack, Slack. I teach, I teach with Slate, <laughs> and I use Slack. It's like ah, oh, torture. So that's what's been going on. Uh, come on into the Zim Slack at HTTP colon. Well, now HTTPS. We're putting S and everything now. Uh, dot com slash Slack, and hope to see you there. Come on and by and say hi. Don't be shy. Ooh, we rhymed. Ciao. <laughs>